So to pass LeBron James in all-time playoff scoring records, somebody is going to have to do what? Average 30 <laughs> points a game and go to like 13 NBA Finals. That shit's not gonna be broken. Welcome to No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. I'm Mike Botticello, he's Gilbert Arenas. And I think, guys, do we have to touch gloves before we get started? Nah, oh, this one. <laughs> this is my guy. I mean, You're a guy, but you know, this is Richard Jefferson right here. Arizona alum and you know, there's, this is a friendly rivalry that's been going on for 20 I, years. No, 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 this is not a rivalry. Like people are just now getting an inner look because like we're on social media and we're both retired. But our relationship that people are just now seeing has been going on since <laughs> I was 17 and he was 15. Like just at basketball, the pump camps. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I met his dumb ass. Yeah. Well, so no chill flashback. This was early, maybe episode one or two. We told the story of his recruitment visit. <laughs> A young kid from the Valley didn't really get out in the world too much. And he shows up at Arizona and you and Luke. Yeah. Yeah, his we were hopeful. So this was the funny thing about Gilbert is that like, he's always been special ever since we were kids. And so I saw Gilbert at this basketball camp and he was really, really good, super young, but just like kid balling at this camp. Skinny, little, but quick, all this stuff. So fast forward two years, I'm a freshman in Arizona and I didn't see him, I don't think the following summer. So I'm in college and it was after my freshman year. And so sophomore year was, no, no, it was, it, no, it was my freshman year. It was my freshman year at school. Cause you came, yeah, it was my freshman year. So that freshman year, they're like, oh, we got this guy coming in. Now, Ruben Douglas was a part of our freshman class. Arizona had one of the top freshman classes. And they were like, yo, this kid coming in. And Ruben was really good. Ruben ended up leading the country in scoring. He transferred to New Mexico mainly because of this guy. But he ended up leading the country in scoring. So the dude could play. Mm -hmm. So they all of a sudden go, no, this kid Gilbert's coming in, Gilbert Arenas. He's good, blah, blah. And I was like, dude, we got Ruben here at the two guard. We got somebody else. I think Luke Recker was You're thinking about right transferring. It. And they're like, no, 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 he's good, blah, blah. I was like, all right, whatever. And I was like, I don't remember. All of a sudden, this, this goofy face <laughs> kid walked in. I was like, oh, this is the kid? This goofy kid from the pump cap? I was like, oh, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> Oh, Wait, is there running oh, shoes? Did he have braces yeah, at the time? Yeah, braces at times. Like, <laughs> hell no, with no wire. I don't even know how his braces were working. But I was just, just for like, looks? Yeah, no wire. Literally, it's like no wire, just, no wire. just the pieces on <laughs> yeah. it. I was like, are they going to wire them bitches the, together? Because the wire's broke, and I, you know. He just never uh, went just never back had and got him. He just kept them on. <laughs> like, this is a kid that's on the college campus with braces on. Like, what kind of shit is this? <laughs> so... That whole recruiting visit, all we did was kind of like make fun of him. Cause I knew him, but I was like, oh, well, so where else is going? Cool? He's like, uh, Kansas State and Cal State North. Oh, I was like, oh, yeah, you're a real typical Arizona recruit. <laughs> so all we did was blast him and mess with him because like that was his personality. And lo and behold, that man showed up on campus the next year and caused problems. Like this dude had that, those braces on and won the preseason NIT <laughs> MVP at 17. It's like, Rest, and rest is history. But it could have gone way different. If that visit, you're like, oh man, I don't really want to go there. I'm gonna go, I've always been a big fish in a small pond. I'm gonna go to Kansas State. No, 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 no. Um, like you had to look at the talent. Like my hopes was, you know, this, you have a school with its history of producing pros. So when they, you know, when Ludoson came to my house, it was, you know, we have Jason Terry, who was just number 10 in the draft, right? We have Jason Terry, he redshirted, went four years. So he's guaranteeing me a pro shot. You know, and that's why I chose Arizona. It was, it was the, like, yeah, I was getting guaranteed you're gonna start here, thousand minutes as a freshman. He guaranteed me a pro. Like, Jason, like, I know who Jason Terry is. I know who Mike maybe was, you know, so I've watched. And so you're saying I can be a pro? Well, and, well I'm going to take, yeah, my, I'm taking yeah, my chances. And, and, and that's where Lute Olsen, people, you know, history obviously doesn't remember as well as people that lived it. But it was like, that's where he was so good at, is at the end of four years, now Gilbert's, like, rise was accelerated because of his talent. 
But it's like at the end of four years, so many guys went on to have long careers that weren't these like great, like Sean Rooks, mm -hmm. Steve Kerr, Judd Bushler, Tom Tolbert. Like I can go down the mm -hmm. list of guys that played in the 80s and 90s that like you could point at. And then all of a sudden it was just because Arizona guys had a, had a reputation in the league for having high basketball IQs, good teammates and good people. Ultimately, the reason why I could fuck with Gilbert and people are just now seeing our relationships and our personalities is because in colleges, people recruit people. Mm -hmm. So like my, my personality, personality recruited his personality. <laughs> so even though it didn't matter what I said to him, <laughs> he just rolled his eyes and laughed. And it was the same way, like Mike Bibby, his personality and like how goofy he was and funny. And he was really, he's not as much out in the public eye, but he's a funny, like over the top. So like he recruited me, Miles Simon recruited me. And so, you know, and again, like Luke Walton, who people don't understand, he's a crazy person. He's a full on crazy person. That's my best friend. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. was, and he helped recruit Gilbert Arenas. If anybody needs a better look at inside of like who Luke Walton really is, that's not the Coach Walton. That's more of an indication of who he is uh, by the company he keeps. Well, you were, you played with him as a kid, You'd like sleep over their house and stuff, right? Who? Luke. That was Zahn. Was that Zahn that you yeah, played? Yeah, that was, I played with uh, Andrew Zahn. Zahn, Andrew nice. Zahn. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you told me a story that you would sleep at their house. Oh, and it was no, bad. The wall, they used the to bully house. Gilbert. They used to bully Gilbert to the point of tears. <laughs> to the point of tears. Do you ever hear this story? Oh, no, no. But oh, so let imagine. me tell you this story. Now, look, we all have these AAU stories. <laughs> I had one story where I played my first AAU tournament and I was never going to go again because I'd never played organized basketball. Uh -huh. I was like 15. <laughs> I played so bad. The kids made fun of me. And it was my first time on the Arizona Stars. And so my mom calls, or they call my mom. And I hear my mom saying, hey, she's like, hey, you know you have a, a you're supposed to go to Colorado Springs this weekend. And I was like, tell those people I'm not going. Last trip was the worst trip of my <laughs> life, right? She goes back in there and she goes, uh-huh, okay, okay. All right, she hangs up the phone. She comes back in. She's like, hey, they already paid for your ticket and we don't have money to pay them back. So you're going. After that, you don't have to go anymore. And I was just like, and I just knew I was going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gilbert, oh. So apparently Gilbert was on this AAU team and this kid Andrew Zahn was like, as a sophomore or freshman, he was like the number one freshman in the country or the number five sophomore, like big, big deal, mm -hmm. right? So apparently he was on the same AAU team as Gilbert and he would just shoot the ball every time, but he was so mean to Gilbert, so mean. I did not know this, but fast forward, Gilbert is now, were you freshman with him? No, it was our sophomore year. Sophomore, sophomore, year. sophomore year. Sophomore year, this kid, Gilbert now at, was after being all freshman, all everything, whatever. Sophomore year, Gilbert's a sophomore, this kid shows up and this guy just, like Gilbert just, we talked about it, like just eviscerating somebody. <laughs> Gilbert took every piece of his like confidence and Andrew's on, if you see this, like, that was, that's not cool what he did. But Andrew did say, it's like, shut up, Gilbert. You're just mad because I made you cry when you weren't playing as a freshman. <laughs> and to tell me and Luke and Lauren Woods and all of us that, oh, we just, we cried laughing. So they just had this big battle of like, like who was going to be more disrespectful to each other the entire season. Uh, did he tell you about when we were in the- International. In the, in, uh, have you told that story before? Oh. Say now is the time. The this, this is bad. This is oh, bad. Oh, oh, yeah. Hold up. I'm trying to think of what it is about his personality that caused people to poke him like that. No, well, no, Are because you too nice. No, no, no. Then I was, I was quiet. Yeah. You know, that, that was like my first experience, so I didn't know what to expect. So you know, you sitting there watching. You come in, you try to play your game, but you know, you got to think about a team that's built around this one player. You know what I mean? You know, so if he's expected to get the ball 20, 30 times, that that's what we had to do. I didn't know that. I never practiced with these guys like that. I'm just going in but Gilbert, playing my game. But Gilbert isn't a habitual line stepper. He's yeah, like a fair, habitual fair line stepper, right? Like, and that's not even like, and I don't think, and this is the thing because I know him and like, I've always looked out for Gilbert, even though we don't talk. <laughs> we don't ever talk. I don't, I don't ever know text. how that's possible. <laughs> no, for instance, right? We're, uh, like, can we talk about like in Washington when I told you like to chill out? Well, which one? Well, the, I'll let, let me tell the story <laughs> and if we need to so edit it. So the answer is yes. So, so let me, I'll tell the story and then we'll edit it if we, if we can. You said, I said, which one? So, yeah, so yeah. Gilbert <laughs> is being himself. Like, he had an incident happen that is famously talked about. 
And he was, you know, goofing off a little bit and kind of joking around. And me and Gilbert don't talk. But I went into the locker room, literally left my locker room pregame, went into his locker room specifically to talk to him. <laughs> and I'm like, Gil, you got to chill out. And he's like, but dude, like, that's what I do. I joke. Everybody. I'm like, but Gil, this is not like, please, Gilbert, I'm just trust me. Didn't listen. And all of a sudden you see these Washington Wizards intros and all of these things that are like making a mockery. Then next thing I know, our guy had to take a little moment of silence. But it was like, even in that moment, like I've, all, I've always looked out for Gilbert and always tried to have his best interest, even when like we don't talk because I know who he is. He is an ultra, ultra competitor. He just wants to play, but he's an habitual line stepper all the time with everything. Sometimes you just got to see how far that line is. You just got to, you, you just got, see Richard. But you Rich, can't keep touching the no, top see, of the stove if it's No, 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 see Richard, you're going to get burned. See I, Richard runs, he'll run full speed and then he has this stopping point. Yeah. Me, I'm like, Most people ha, ha, I beat you. But there's only, there's only like certain people that can beat me, <laughs> right? And I say that knowing that like I'm not all the way up there. I, I push limits, especially like I push limits as much. I've gotten a couple of talking tos for people that I work with. I'm like, I don't know if that's acceptable, but like Gilbert's the one person, but Gilbert is a line. Like, I'll tell a story, I've never said this before. We were in our locker room, I don't know what happened, right? And like, we were all like competitive. We were all competing, but we were like on a very good team. So we knew that it wasn't gonna be like one person. But what we used to do is like, if he was playing against like a high level two guard, like Casey Jacobson, or if Lauren Woods at the time was playing against Chris Mim, we would just give the ball to that one person the <laughs> whole game and then try and shut Chris Mim down. <laughs> or we would shut in just the rate, like even we played Eddie House. Yep. Gilbert, Gil, Eddie House went for 61, played us a week later, we gave the ball to Gilbert every time and we did like a five on one <laughs> yeah, against, yeah, yeah. against Eddie House. But I remember Gilbert, we were arguing about something and he just, he just cuts, he's just mean, right? He's like, how the f are you even gonna make it to the NBA? You can't even dribble. And then like walked <laughs> off. And I was like, who said anything about the NBA? Why are we talking about that, Gil? Like, Wait, where'd that come from? It's just mean. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm 19, I wanna make it in the Your NBA. Your point of you is mean, but what people- We're all NBA players. <laughs> Five of us. We, <laughs> you don't think we've talked about the NBA? We're all NBA players on this team right here. No. So that was like our. Like, that was crushing, our like. Boop, boop. He's trying to crush dreams. Yeah. Right. And I couldn't dribble. I like this couldn't. I couldn't. That's all. <laughs> he didn't need to. Didn't but you could dribble, jump over him. But I could jump over. I was like, yeah. I was yeah. like, Gilbert. I don't really. I like. I can. Like my three point line in game is great. But like <laughs> full court or three point line to three point line, not so much. Three point line in, my handle is perfect. <laughs> That's all I need. It was just but I'm mean. thinking like psychiatrist chair here. Was it because you saw what he could do and you were jealous of that? He was our leading scorer. Doesn't matter. He wants what he couldn't have. No, that was just how we, sh that's how we cut. Like, come on, you got to cut. Appreciate what he could do. No, you no, have to no, cut. No, like, you got to. Did you hear the recruiting visit? That's you gotta yeah, I think that's, I think that's, that's what it was. the dynamic of our relationship. <laughs> Pushing lines. You got to remember, he, hold that he, he's yeah. like, uh, uh, uh. I'm so guy. the only way to stop it, you got to like really get in there and then poof, get out there because he's going to, okay, I got him. And we, all, and we all had that. Like there was a guy, Ricky Anderson, that was on our team. <laughs> I think what you guys figured out though, that not every program could probably pull this off. Like let's say Duke, for example, right? That you need to have fun and be your personality and be who you are. Otherwise, we're never going to go anywhere. Yeah, that's but that's how we, you recruit. Yeah, that's how you recruit those guys. That's why, like, when they talk about the family tree, it's because it really is. When you look at universities, right, especially ones that have one head coach for 10, 15, 20 years, you all know how to recruit the same type of personalities. Because when you go on the visit, if you have fun with these groups of guys, it's because you guys all get along. Like you all like the same things. And then it just, the, that can continue. And with Arizona, it started in 83 and went to 2000 and what, six or seven when Lou Olson's retired. That's a long family tree of guys. And we all get along, whether it's Steve Kerr, that, that'll that be in Tex Chains or Damon Stoudemire, guys that like, we never were we're, a part we're probably, of. We're probably one of the only, we have to say we're the only group that has their own text chain of ex-players. Well, maybe from like three different generations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that there's probably a bunch of the, like yeah, we have Kansas the, and Kentucky. Yeah. And, and like we have, players. I mean, 
we, we have a we have guys that played in eighty five up until two thousand. What did they say about your group? Because you kind of we brag the I, we brag the most until like Damien comes out and yeah, hit us yeah. with the <laughs> hit us with the stomp. But it's again, again, it's like we were so fortunate, man. Like especially even watching the Last Dance, having like Judd Bushler, mm -hmm. um, Steve Kerr, mm -hmm. those guys that were such big parts of like what we were growing up. Like wow, to have two Arizona guys be huge parts of like the Jordan dynasty. So it was like you know Steve Kerr talked at my basketball camp. Like I lived in San Diego. Me and Luke did a basketball camp in San Diego. All of a sudden Steve Kerr comes in. Now, looking back, think about these kids that were at my basketball camp 10 years ago, 15 years ago. The head coach of the Warriors used to come and talk, and, you know, and he was now you see him on the last stand. So the Arizona, you know, tree, if you will, man, is fun because, like, it goes back in history. You still see it, you know, prevalent today. Uh, that's why that, that coaching hire this year was such a big deal because it's like there's a lot involved in that. Yeah. It doesn't make sense is – Majority of the planet goes on a job interview. Gilbert was on a job interview mm -hmm. and he did not take the job interview as well as he should have. So instead of being on the board and being a lottery pick, he ended up working in the mail room <laughs> and <laughs> to work his way up. But the problem with Gilbert in, in hindsight is that they didn't know that his shooting capability was going to go where it was. So at that point in time, he was a combo hybrid guard. Yeah, they didn't. And they didn't have that. The, today, like Lou they Will, didn't. like you see like, uh, not, like a Steph Curry, and that's not, like I'm not saying he was like a Dave, shooter like that, yeah. but the guys that are just like scoring guards, like they didn't have that nearly as much as they did back in the day. It was the, you know, that was still the era of John Stockton. Yeah, there was like, Jason can you play Kidd one? Nash, you didn't like, play one. Can you run the team? Can you run the court? Not score manager. Not yeah, that's right. that's what it was. And so they were like, he's he is short. Right? Yeah, you're short, short, but short for a shooting guard. So that's what that's what I learned quick. Yeah. So I mean, after I got drafted, I'm I'm you know crying. You know another. Cry moment. Um, <laughs> another cry moment. Hot, you know. Call, I'm gonna call Ronnie Tension. Can I come back to college? No, I. Didn't. Well, you were mad that you went in the second round. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know. Well, you didn't know that you went in the second round. No, I didn't know. I was going like, why am I in the second round? Oh, I could have told you that. Yeah, see, but I mean, we had that. We had, it was so funny is we we had that conversation. <laughs> Like yeah, I don't think you're but gonna. Like, yeah, I don't okay. think you're gonna go where you think you're gonna no, go. So like, like, wait, wait, what? 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 You know well, something I don't know? Well, Gilbert, Gilbert didn't fully, un maybe still doesn't understand <laughs> that per that that behavior can affect like uh, elevation the of performance. The way you present yourself. Yeah, and there was a couple of moments that he had in the pre-draft that if they did any sort of background check on him, they were like, uh, and then all of a sudden, like, they see him in the pre-draft, and they're like, uh. Then when it came to, should we draft him in, this, in the first round, they were like, uh. <laughs> Boston, no. I mean, look, listen, come on. Come on. Gil. I came from Arizona, bro. Gil. We're in shape like crazy. Like, we, we take our shit serious. You're putting me on this treadmill, bro, to see my fitness today? But and the season doesn't start into... Yeah, but October? It was, it was, but Gil, okay. So that, people, is the dumb, they, that was the they, dumbest so thing I've ever seen. You know the story, but for people that might not, Gilbert goes to the pre-draft camp, which is all every kid that you're getting a draft to go. Some kids have to play to go up and down in the draft to see how they handle it. Some guys, like, I don't think, you didn't have to play. Did you have to play? Mm -hmm. Uh, I got Stephen Hunter number fifteen. Oh yeah, I just just well, one baby. I didn't, I didn't have to play. <laughs> if, you, if you were a, if you were projected anywhere near the lottery, you didn't have to play. But guys could guys could go up and play and push themselves high and play really well. It happens all the time. So Gilbert, like they have all these tests. Gilbert is doing these tests in Chuck Taylors and doing them more half-assed than you can ever imagine. We are on the precipice of our dreams of the things that like. 0.01% of people get to experience. And Gilbert is like, I'm not doing this treadmill chest. Y'all gonna mess up my Chuck Taylors. And you're sitting here like, like people are looking at me like I'm supposed to say something to them. Like, yo, get your boy. And I'm like, oh, y'all are just meeting Gil. No, that's 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 him gonna be him forever. Forgot, yeah, but it's one of those things that I you're forgot telling, like, I was King Dickhead then. 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 No, no, no. I re oh, yeah. Did, no. He tell, did he tell you about? Did he tell you, dog? Did he tell you about when we were in the international? In the, in the, uh, have you told that story before? 
Um, I'd say now is the time. The this, this is bad. This is oh, bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, again, tell, I know what you're talking So about. this dude, we're sitting in there, and there's a bunch of Arizona guards, but it's just like all the guys that we, the whole, like, draft thing. And so they're talking. It's like pre-draft, telling stories, and they're like, you know, what do you want to get out of this league? And I think they, like, interviewed, like, Jason Collins first. <laughs> so then Gilbert starts laughing, you know, once Jason starts talking, just because because we hate Stanford. <laughs> and so, like, anytime we can make fun of Stanford, we can't. Like, Duke, Stanford, all the like, yeah. prestigious schools. You know, we're like, they're the private schools in the area. We're the hood school. Uh -huh. So we made fun of them. And the whole room keeps laughing, right? Just because he's because it's him. So then they go, what do you want to get out of this league? What do you want to say? Well, what do you, sir, what do you want to get out of this league? Gilbert goes, thinking he's being funny. <laughs> Gilbert even knows. He has a feel for the moment. He goes, I want to be a pimp. And you're just like, oh, Gil, what are you doing? And, and then this the guy, room just goes quiet. Well, the room kind of giggles, giggles, giggles. And the guy doubled down. The guy doubles <laughs> down on Gilbert, not knowing Gilbert. Gilbert goes, the guy goes, excuse me, what did you say? And I was just like, no, Gil, don't do it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it, Gil. Don't say it. Gil goes, I want to be an international <laughs> pimp. And I was like, oh, he said it. Oh, he said it. <laughs> so, so we're in, I'm not you, there's hundreds of people in this room, right? And this guy just goes off on Gilbert. He goes, if that's what you think this league is about, and, what, and he's like, if you were here talking about objectifying women and blah, 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 this isn't the place, and you could just leave. And Gilbert was like, I'll stop. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, so right, right, no, right there, there's that, there point that line that you got to. No, he got to that line. It. He went a little over. I went over. I, the only reason I went over is because I was playing, and I thought he was just going to move on. No. But then he took it serious, and, and I... Gilbert took it serious. I, I doubled down, too. Yeah, but, you but doubled down, I doubled down. Then walked him. But as, as if, you, if you're there with him, how do you just not say, like, hey, hey man, right? Especially, no. same thing with the Chucks. How much did Chucks cost you? 40, 40 bucks? Hey, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Really quickly. Can you, can you introduce yourself to this man? Like, this is Gilbert Arena. It's nice, nice, like, what are you talking you put about? your arm around him, like, hey. I, listen, I know, listen. This, this, I know listen. you've done all this stuff in the past, but just for right Come now, on, there's just certain people. Right there's just there's certain, no, like, there's certain people you don't call on in a classroom. And everyone, Because you know yeah. they're not going to take it serious. We, 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 if, every, if you would ask every player not to pick on one person, it would have been me. So, yes. so what do you Because I wasn't going to take anything serious. I'm just, I'm the joke guy. I'm the guy I, that I'm tries confused. to make everyone I'm laugh. So reverse I'm psychology, you don't say anything. I'm confused with your line of questions. <laughs> like, I'm really confused. Like, you're asking if, like, I could have said something to Gilbert to stop being Gilbert? Like, but there's, there's, if there's one way to get through to him, say, it's about the money, right? So those forty dollars yeah. chucks. If you didn't run on the truck, okay. Though, no, 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 no. So okay, the Chuck story is different. It's different because of this. I have on Chucks, right? Trying to represent LA. Mind you, they told, mind you, they told us to wear running shoes. We well, all. When, yeah, when he shows up in the Chucks, you say everyone does. Yeah, everyone has to run. I've trained my ass off. Now you're telling me to run on this for what? Eighteen minutes for what? We need to check your conditioning. For what? What is the conditioning? In July, August have to do with my conditioning. You're not in. in you're September, not September, November. It just uh, October. It didn't make sense. Okay, it didn't, so, it didn't make sense. No, what like if I'm out of shape right now, I'm gonna be in shape by the time that season. What starts. doesn't make sense is majority of the planet goes on a job interview. Gilbert was on a job interview, mm -hmm. and he did not take the job interview as well as he should have. So instead of being on the board. And being a lottery pick, he ended up working in the mail room <laughs> and <laughs> to work his way up the secret to my success. So you knew he that. Go Michael may, may, you knew uh, that. So he, he laid the groundwork for you. Basically, because I took a whole koi fish out the pond <laughs> and put it in front of one of our teammates' doors. See, I push limits with a line, mm. but my but I, I actively am trying to push limits just because it, it, I get bored if I don't. He pushes limits with no lines. Like his goal is to extend the lines. Think about the way you came to the league that it was like just the Wild West in, in Golden State where you had pros, you had Jay Kidd running the show, you went right to the finals, you know, like you had to catch up to that. Yeah, yeah. So it was, you know, it was just a lot. I actually was mad that we did that, and, you know, Brandon Armstrong's my boy, don't take this the wrong way, but I was mad. I was like, dude, he's not better than Gilbert. I was so confused. Um, Joseph Forte, there was a bunch of guys that went over him. And I was really, really confused. And 
um, I was like just thinking to myself, like that Nets team, like, ah, could you imagine if we would have had Gilbert, if Gilbert would have been that? <laughs> like, not so we we might have beat the Spurs, we wouldn't have beat the Lakers, but we we if Gilbert was our backup two guard at that time, it had been him, him and Kerry Kittles, yeah, we probably would have beat the Spurs, but you know, we were just fine. I would, you know what, my life would have been miserable had him been there. Well, so I was well, glad he wasn't I'm thinking, there. I don't know, I don't know if I would have turned out the same player though. I, I, you would have because I would have had early success. Yeah, I would have had early success when yeah. Golden State, the the failure of not playing, and but you would have because you would have because you would have been more of a player that was in the limelight. So the money is the same if you average twenty points a game for a shitty team or if you average fifteen points a game for a team going to the finals. No, but see, you got to remember anger, anger sitting on the bench, anger of my situation is what. Oh, you set were going to sit on a bench set, a ton for. I know, but, but, Don't but set me in it, but it set me, but that's what set me in a gym all day. That's fair. That's you know, fair. that's and that's what I looked at. Like, if I would have went in, even if I came in three, four, five minutes, that's still three or four or five minutes more than I played here. I was I was benched. And I'm benched for a, a group of knuckleheads. So it's <laughs> like so so the anger that's built that that's that was building is what But that, I mean that's and but to your point where you're like where are when we gotta remember I'm watching you guys and I'm sitting here like salty. Yeah, I'm not no, no, no. I wasn't salty because I wasn't ready. Like it wasn't, you gotta remember, like I'm I'm Jason Richardson. I'm I'm killing him in practice. In a game, that's a different Jason Richardson. Like he's dunking on people. He's the, like you running up and down, catching lives, and I'm like, I can't do none of that. I can't. And the game was different. The game wasn't scoring yeah. guard dominant. Yeah. Like it it, it wasn't. It, it like it, look, you had the AIs, you had the Steve Francis's, you had those guys that were just so over the top. But Gilbert was one of those guys that worked his way into that very, very quickly. Where it's like, you don't see that. Like a, a second round pick working his way into, you know, being an all NBA player. Like that just, it, it happens very, very rarely. Some of it is scouts messing up. Two of it is like how hard someone works and their natural ability. So yeah, it, it was a different game, man. And like today's game, shit. My numbers wouldn't have changed in today's game. His numbers would have changed in today's game. His numbers would have changed in you today's know what no, because like I would have shot more threes, but I was always it's always dunks and lay like that's but there, always but <clears throat> now you're dunks and lay there's no big big guy back there trying to block. Yeah, but verticality. Remember back in the day they used to have to go for blocks. Now those bigs just stand up there and be big and you it's hard to go through them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that verticality stuff sucks. Back in the day, everybody used to have to try and block a right. shot. So like you would shoot more threes, you would do that. So yeah, but even then, like the shooting of threes, like, dude, my eyes were at that rim. Yeah. I wanted to get to <laughs> that rim and catch body. So if I had a three-point, I had a wide open <laughs> three-point shot, I would pump fake, still drive it at people. So you were right there though when that changed, and I'm thinking of Golden State, you know, being Cleveland, that's it. So, but at what point did that change to where early 2000s NBA, which much more up and down, transitional, big, big driven, and now it's stretched out. Well, I think, I, in my opinion, it started It started with the Phoenix Suns, in my opinion, with Steve Nash and that crew and how he just handled the ball and had all of the shooters around him. They also had Amari Stoudemire, who was mm -hmm. absurd. Was, it, my, Amari Stoudemire, he is the reason why the Suns had that success. It was Steve Nash creating for them, but that space that he was taking up, rolling to the rim, that's what got all those three-point shooters <laughs> yeah, open, yeah, yeah. and they shot a lot of them. And so I think it started with them, and then I think you fast forward it, it started to grow, grow, grow. Then when Steph and Clay and those guys all got on the same team, it became such a weapon now of like, not only are we gonna shoot more threes, but you're gonna have the greatest shooters in the world shooting yeah. 10, 12, 15, 17 threes a night. And they couldn't say no to that with Steph and Clay together. You can't say no to it when it was successful. Right, but you were sort of, you, you were sort of doing that yourself. I'd say that. Yeah. Yeah, but it was still, you gotta remember, still the East was, you know, the East is more rugged. So you're still, like, we had, I had more fun playing in the West because the West was sitting here like this. Yeah. Like, the only time that we went up and down was against them. But other than that, it was grinded, playing Pistons. Yeah. They wanna score. But the team, they wanna score 82 to... points. Like, they ain't, they ain't got contracts to go after. Mm -hmm. But the it's... team that you tried to put together at that time, and you think of DC mid, uh, early 2000s, it was, uh, point guard like you, wing player Karan. We was in, we was in the same offense. So we was in the same offense. Mm -hmm. So it was more of a Princeton, two guards, two forwards. 
in, in the center. Princeton offense, man. See, I know people hate on it. It was underrated, dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This raw offense was fun because you got easy buckets without people having to work, and it made it better for guys like Gilbert because he didn't have to create for players. The offense would cre create for them so he could go do what he want. He could go score. And then all of a sudden it was like, all right, we're going to run this play. So everyone touches it. Everyone, if you score, you score. Cool. This is basically your chance to go. And then in transition and stuff is for me. But no, I think the game has changed in the right way. I think the, it's scary to me that like kids are going to see Steph and Clay and the and Dame and, and, Brian, and these guys shooting in half court because it's coming like that. It's just it's it, the 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 growth is coming. That's that's one thing. The one thing that's constant is change. And so there's going to be kids that see it. And so there's going to be a ton of people not that can shoot like Steph and Clay, but maybe that guys that are like quality shooters that now are shooting from so deep. So then the game just opens up the space. It's going to be a problem. There's going to be there's going to be so many three shot in the next like ten years. Yeah, and that's the funny thing is that Steph records is gonna be broken at some point. Remember, Steph's yeah. records is... Five years old. No, no, not even five years old. The first five years of Steph's career was kind of shaky because of his ankle. So someone coming in has this five-year advantage of, you know, so his records could be broke. Yeah, and again, it, and, but you, like, his records, like even like he just broke uh, James Harden's three-point record. Think about that. He didn't own the three-point record. James Harden did for like a month, for like a single month. He had like, <laughs> like, and Steph was on a crazy tear and he just broke the record. And you're sitting here like, to think that Steph didn't own that record. That was, that was James Harden, <laughs> right? Like James Harden, the stuff that he's doing too. So like these, there's gonna be guys that come in and again, it could be, you have to, the difference between Steph and why I think his records will be hard is because that's his weapon. That's his weapon. Right, like breaking like Shaq's dunk record is impressive because that was his weapon. Who's the greatest scorer of this era? Is it Steph? Is it James? KD? I hear exactly what you're saying. <laughs> I hear exactly what you're saying, and and I, people might disagree with me. And that's why I think you look back at this era, you're gonna say there was a greatness era, a greatness in scoring in this era. Who's the greatest scorer of this era? Is it Steph? Is it James? KD? LeBron James. Scorer. LeBron James. It was open Not as always. Open as always. I hear exactly what you're saying. <laughs> I hear exactly what you're saying. And, and I, people might disagree with me, but understand this. The greatest scorer is not only its consistency, its longevity, and its amount. Now, it might not be these crazy bursts, like for me, I was never like a 40 point a game. I was like every night you were going to get between between on my best you were going to get between like 17 and 30. Every single night. I was not a 9 points, 51, 22. No, I was just very consistent. LeBron James playoff scoring, right? Playoff scoring. He passed Michael Jordan 3 seasons ago and he's going to add to that, right? Or before his career ends. So to pass LeBron James in all-time playoff scoring records, somebody is going to have to do what? Average 30 <laughs> points a game and go to like 13 NBA Finals. That shit's not gonna be broken. That, the, the playoff one's not, and then he's gonna pass Kareem. So as much as we don't view him as a scorer, right? Like Steph's greatest shooter, Kevin Durant, greatest like weapon as a scorer, cause he's so big, but like, who's the greatest scorer? He's number four all time right now. You know what's so funny? I had an argument with someone about that, and it was like, uh, it was like, uh, he's not even a, a, a natural scorer. And I was like, and that should be funny because <laughs> the guy who's a fast, per, a fast uh, pass first thinker has beaten out two dominant scores. Guys that like, just scored they first. They just scored first and and that's not a disrespect. So how do you say scored first? <laughs> like I said, how do you say he's not <laughs> 25 points a game for 15 straight years? Like I know and it's weird, I know because it's weird when you when you you don't think of him as that. He doesn't approach the game as that, but when you look at the records, they are that. <laughs> See, yeah, and that's the and that's the that's the, so like if someone says who is the so, best natural score in the game today, everyone's gonna say, you know. KD. I would, yeah. yeah.
But who's the best scorer of all time? <laughs> It'd be LeBron. Like when the number should, because that's longevity, and, but, but, and he could do anything he wants on the court. No, but it's long. You say longevity. Like, how did Kareem and Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and Karl Malone get to that level? Kareem longevity. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was all longevity. So it's like when you're talking about the greatest scorers of all time, would you put Michael Jordan and Kobe and Kareem and Karl Malone mm -hmm. up there? But you don't consider Braun, even though he's about to pass <laughs> all of those guys. But that's <laughs> well. That's what you, would you it's say so Kareem absurd, is Kareem, Kareem? Is he the greatest scorer? If he's at the top of Kareem the list, Kareem is the greatest basketball. Never, never Kareem shot a three. is the great greatest basketball player that ever played. If you look at like his dominating college, his like career in the NBA, LeBron James is probably the greatest basketball player ever built. Like built as far as like can do all of said things. I think Kevin Durant is probably the greatest offensive weapon we've seen. Like if you're just going specific skills, that's that. Steph Curry is the greatest shooter specific that we've ever seen. I think Michael Jordan is the the, the greatest combination of like 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 focus and determination and like clutch because when he got a hold of the throne, he never let it go. And I think Kobe Bryant is like that guy that just like he saw he saw MJ as perfection and worked in 20 hours a day to achieve that perfection. So I think when you're talking about goats, there are legitimate categories that you can place all of these guys in. And that's the way to have the conversation. It's yeah. not just one guy and it's a broad brush. Yeah, because you know when you say it in football terms, it's hard to say who's the best football player or the best, who's the goat, because you, you have so many different positions. In the NBA, it's the same thing too. And there's no disrespect to Tom Brady. I love Tom Brady. Like, Tom Brady, like, what, what's not to like about the dude? But when people talk about, like, who's the greatest athlete, right? Like, America, especially because, he, you know, he's got that ring. It's like, how many people are playing football in other countries? Right? In the United States, yes, Tom Brady is that dude. But ultimately, like, LeBron James or Michael Jordan are having to play against players from all around the world that are playing said game. Mm -hmm. So like the talent pool in that game is exponentially higher than the talent pool in football. So like, yes, your dominance in football is outstanding. This is not a critique of you, but if you're talking to me, if you're talking about the greatest of all time, it has to be things like boxing, tennis, um, I would say basketball, soccer. Right, if your sport does not include the entire world, it's hard for me to call you a goat from outside of your sport, right? Like, yeah, you're the goat of this, or you're the goat of that, but like tennis or golf, like that means you're dominating the whole world. When Tiger Woods was dominating, anybody in the world that can pick up a golf club, <laughs> go see that man. Mm -hmm. And in football, and, and even in baseball, there you know, there's South Americans, there's there's, but and you know, it's in Asia, it's growing, but I don't think it's as it's not as worldwide, but it is worldwide. You know, it, I would rank football probably of the three major sports as probably the least international, uh, even if you're including hockey. All right. One thing you are allowed, one thing, one moment to do over. What would it be? One thing, I know there's multiple, but just one. All right, let's do this. So we do a segment, Ask Agent Zero. Okay. And this could be anything, so obviously be careful here. But anything that comes to mind that you've always wanted to know about Gil, or pick his brain about even. All right. One thing you are allowed one thing, one moment to do over, what would it be? One thing. I know there's multiple, but just one. There's probably You're thousands. You're talking about on the basketball court or No, no, no. I'm talking about like, it could, be, it could be how you handled an injury. It could be how you handled a situation. It could be how you handled a relationship. It could be how you handled anything. You are allowed. God is looking at you and saying, listen, mm -hmm. I know you've done nothing to deserve this, <laughs> but you're allowed one thing that I'll allow you to go redo or change the way you approach it. Mm. Charlotte. Okay. April 3rd. Okay. In Charlotte, after the game. What did you do? I, uh, I questioned Eddie's decision on not starting Brendan. 
And because we end up lo- <clears throat> we end up losing, and I was like, shouldn't we be getting ready for the playoffs? We should be getting ready for the playoffs, and we over here f-ing around with the lineup. And then he was like, let me do my job like I let you do your job. <laughs> Next day, I was benched. I got my I was uh, I got my starting spot taken away from me. Why Went did you get the- your starting spot taken away? Because they thought I was going to be late, which I wasn't late, but it was because of the, the argument the night before. So, the so we was on the back-to-back. So we was oh, Char- oh, so, so we was like on the, Char- Charlotte so and Charlotte. Okay, okay. So it was Charlotte in Charlotte and then home versus okay. Charlotte. So I challenged them in Charlotte, which I never, you know, never yeah, done before. Yeah, yeah. Um, but and I was just, the man. but it was just, Eddie, Eddie, yeah. Eddie and Michael Corn, that was the nicest. This was a never, never, we never had any problems. It was just, I was frustrated that we were losing when we should be trying to get ready for the playoffs because yeah. now our whole team just got back. Yeah. So the next game, uh, I bench come into the game, and then that's where Jerry Wallace. April 30th. Mm-hmm. April, April 3rd. April 3rd, like I said. It was so, it was one of those like. One thing led to the next thing that led to the next thing. And it just, it's just a, it's just just a crumble of it. And I wouldn't even call that the karma. I I understand what you're saying because like ultimately those things are a lot more commonplace. But it was, it was karma because he was right. Like I let you do your job. So the fact that he's never, he never questioned on how I play the game. He just let me play the game. I shouldn't have questioned how he was coaching. But that's but those are conversations that lead to growth, right? Like you recognize that he was right. Maybe now I don't know how long it took you to realize he was right in that moment. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> just had to be asked the question. <laughs> you just asked the right question. <laughs> now, there you have it, people. <laughs> Hey, it takes time for me to realize some shit when I don't want to realize. I mean, it. he eventually learns, right? Just not when you need him to. We are me and Gilbert are more similar. We're a lot more similar. Stubborn, hard headed, very stubborn, headed. Very, we will do the opposite just because you're telling us not Let's to do, do it. it. Uh, he has another layer that that I don't, <laughs> but I relate to him so so much. But yeah, no, I, like I, I, if I had to look back, there were a couple of things very similar to that that I would do over. I think that's the coolest thing about the two of you and your friendship is that you are similar in that way. You said you're more introverted. You're introverted too in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. You kind of like to be left alone so you know if I do this, this is what I have to do so people will be, you know, set in their, they'll be able to leave me alone. Yeah. Your thing is, don't put me in the box. Yeah. I'm going to climb out of yeah, it. I just, uh, yeah, I just, Cut a hole in it. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm still in but here. But then, like, if you get messed with, and you do this too, you clap back at people. Whereas you would think the introvert wouldn't want, you would just let it, let it go by. I, I pick and choose, because obviously social media and given my job, but a lot of times <clears throat> I'll use it as an opportunity to just express sarcasm, because that makes me feel better, yeah, yeah. right? When I just have to deal with insanely stupid people. Like feel, better, feel better about yourself, because- Not know, about yeah. myself, it just, it helps me tolerate the world that we live in. It might look rough to people on the outside, but if you're in the circle- We don't care. We don't care. And look, at the end of the day, you, and, I, and I tell you, look, I, I, the best thing I ever heard, and it's true, if I ever say something that is offensive or that you're upset about, just text me, just text me. And if you don't have my number, I probably don't care about your feelings. <laughs>His trolling is a little bit different. I just, I just do the opposite. I see everybody's cheering for this person. I'm gonna go on this person's side and. Oh yeah. Just, oh, when you get when people are like, God, Jefferson's always on social media, and I'm like, How do you know? No. Yeah. Unless you're always on social media. Also, I get paid to comment under ESPN Sports Center. What are you doing while watching it? What are you doing? Don't tell me that I'm always on social media if you always see me, because you know what that means. You're always on social media. See, these are the fucking stupid people that yeah. we have to like work with. Oh, I know, and I think we struck a nerve here. But the point is, you don't always have to respond. That's to not that. true. It's fun. As long fun. as you respond, it's fun. fun. It's if fun. you have fun, it's with fun. It. It's fun. Tell me how to have fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't judge me in my fun. What do you Just think? Just um, I mean, you, you, you do what you're fun. Yeah, well, I don't. Ju- I don't judge you when you dress up the way you do. Mm. Throw back. Like grown man's jersey <laughs> on your back. Back all the time. Like you're Every probably, episode, you're probably want to be, hey, everybody, <laughs> don't say anything bad about Griffey. Guess what? After this, you're going to be like, that was nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break up. I guarantee you next episode, you're going to wear a baseball jersey. I guarantee you. I have a real one. See? <laughs> Just to prove he has a real one. I have a real one signed. Yeah, cool. 
I knew it. By the guy. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> see you next episode. Yeah, see you next episode. <laughs> well, on that note, that's a, we have something to look forward to. Yeah, can't wait. Um, this was great. Always a pleasure, man. I appreciate you guys. Way overdue. This wasn't personal that we didn't have you in sooner. I'm just. I didn't care. I'm never gonna ask. Once he asked me, once he asked me, once he asked me, once he asked me, I go as long as he'll come back on road tripping, yeah. me and Oof. Channing. No, that's public. No, that's public. No, it's public. He already said now. he was gonna come back on. Who? I'll tell you what. You tell. I, well, you can come on, but who should we pair you with? Should we pair you with Karam? Do you, would you want to tell some stories with Karan about the old Washington? You know Karan's serious though, right? I know, but that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it fun. For you it does, because you get the poke. I get the poke. I like to poke people. Wait, why do you want to be paired with anybody? No, because like it's fun. It's, it's, I, the conversation, like we've all told so many stories and we have so many, but when like, like just adding Channing to like our already, <laughs> yeah. and then adding Nick, it just makes the stories that much more like, like different because you get, you get four different perspectives of the same train wreck, right? I feel like when you had Nick, you and Nick together, though, it turned into an intervention. No! Oh, it, definitely, it definitely was. It always is an intervention. <laughs> always. Gilbert, always. Everyone's always trying to stop him from doing what he's doing. But, like, Nick was... Like the the younger brother on the couch that was like, look, man, you've been hurting me for years. I just and he had help from the old. <laughs> yeah, but that's guys. the way. But that's the way Channing is with me. Yeah, yeah. Like that's yeah. I'm just I like I love Channing's like my little brother. But like the way that like I treated Gilbert, like but he's a little different. It's the same way I treat Channing. Is the same way Mike Bibby and the, and Miles Simon treated me. Like it's just like this this tree <laughs> down the line of just messing. You always with the kick other. the. You always know. just. You always take care of them and you always look out for them, but you just give them a tremendous amount of shit. Yeah. If we don't give you shit, we don't care. And we don't care. That's what it is. That's the bond. The Arizona bond. Bear down. It might look rough to people on the outside, but if you're in the circle, we don't care. <laughs> we don't care. And look, we at the end of the day, and I, and I tell you, look, I, I, the best thing I ever heard, and it's true, if I ever say something that is offensive or that you're upset about, just text me. Just text me. And if you don't have my number, I probably don't care about your feelings. <laughs> That's how we're gonna cut. <laughs>